Hello everyone, this is Fox Sports television producer Danny Jackson, and we have a very special episode of Angler Chronicles in store for you today. The passion for sport fishing has been passed on through the generations. This week on Angler Chronicles, we will talk with Captain Damon Davis about his love for fishing as well as Sergio and his son Sebastian. Ron Hobbs and his son and grandson, as well as Eric Bent and his father Jerry, all about the passion of sport fishing. And I will have a chat with my son Corby, as well as share with you some vintage video clips of a very passionate for fishing family. In the Jackson family, we start fishing early in life, just like Mike Lane and Scott Pethtel with their children, as you will see in this week's episode, Passing on the Passion. Angler Chronicles, proud to be sponsored by Owner Perfection in Hooks, Bass Knuckles Clothing, and by Turner's Outdoorsman, your fishing, hunting, and shooting headquarters since 1971. Hi everybody and welcome to Angler Chronicles and this week's very special episode, Passing on the Passion. Today Sergio will be fishing with Mike Lane and Scott Pethtel, two young men who are very passionate about fishing and are passing their love for the sport down to their children. You guys ready to go fishing? Yes. Give me high fives. All of us who love sport fishing gained this appreciation through a parent, aunt, uncle, a sibling, or someone else very special in our lives. And that's what this episode of Angler Chronicles is all about. Today, Mike and Scott are taking their kids fishing out of Huntington Harbor, close to the local oil rigs, oil islands, and the Long Beach Federal Break Wall. We invite you now to sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of Angler Chronicles, Passing on the Passion. Now push the button again, let it go back down to the bottom. Get him, Jackson. Got him there. Plenty bad. Help in here. Look at there, Jackson. Yeah, you're on the scoreboard. True giant. On the scoreboard. Woo! High five. All right. Ready? Real. for a second. Let it go down to the bottom, okay? We're going to let it go all the way down. Daddy, yeah, baby. You got a big one? Really? Hopefully, Daddy, is he still there? Stop. Okay, you go. Go fast. He's going to come off. Uh, I help. Stop. Okay. okay. <laughs> here, you do. Here, you, you put your finger in here, though. No. I'll show you. Now no. go. You got a big one. Look what yeah. you got. Is it calico bass? That's a calico bass. <laughs> Dad, is this a calico bass? That's a calico bass. See in the water? Ready? Come back. There he goes. Oh, he's swimming. He's swimming. Folks, as you can see, the youngsters are totally enjoying the day on the water with their dads. Right now, we're going to Davy's Locker and talk with Captain Damon Davis, who was asked if he can even remember his first fishing trip with his dad. You know what, I don't think that I do because uh, rumor has it I was starting to go with him when I was like two years old. And uh, so I really don't remember the first time, pretty much as far back as I can remember. I remember fishing with my dad everywhere from rivers to lakes, a lot of times on the ocean all summer long. And I honestly could never remember not going out with him. 
Uh, my favorite memory, my dad had like a 17 foot aluminum boat and I can remember vividly back in like the summer of 83 or 84, um, one of the last big El Ninos and knocking the snot out of Albacore, you know, just in between here and Catalina and being nine years old, catching, you know, 20, 30, 40 pound Albacore all summer long. It was, it was awesome. You know, one of the uh, biggest privileges I have as a father is passing that on down to my kids. You know, these both these boys, before they were even three years old, were out here on the boat with me, going to Catalina Island on twilight trips. And it's one thing that, you know, draws us closer together even now. And it's one thing that I look forward to being able to do, you know, as I become an old man and they can take me out fishing. It's just something that my father and I still do to this day, go out fishing. That's one thing that I anticipate and look forward to doing with these two. And the third one that I have at home that's too young yet, but I uh, look forward to doing that pretty much the rest of my life. I can't wait to pass on the passion. Thank you, Uncle Serge. <laughs> Give Serge a thumbs up. Good job, boys. Welcome back to Angler Chronicles on Fox Sports West. Today, Sergio is fishing with Mike Lane, Scott Pethtel, and their children. This week's episode is Passing on the Passion, so please stay with us. You're going to give that one back to me? Yes. Jackson. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're on. <laughs> Come on, Jackson. Oh. What do you got? Calico, Calico look bass. at that. What is yeah. it? Calico bass. Small one. Oh. Oh. Look what I got on from church. That was great. Give me a high five. Yeah, yeah, look at that. You bet. Calico bass. Good job, Jackson. All right, let's get him and put him back in the water. I bye, Calico bass. Come out here for a couple hours with the kids. It's unbelievable. Yeah, especially now you come out here just with light lines, you know, and, and, and do some drop shot with some gulp with your kids or whoever. And you can drop shot, you get, you know, 6 inch to 12 inch to 14 inch to 4 pound sand bass just by these little inside oil islands. It's real easy, come out here for a couple hours and then just go back in. But especially during summer times, I mean, it's a lot of fun. The kids can come out here just for a few hours, just get away for a little bit. Easy day. All right, folks, as you know, it's all about passing on the passion. And I remember the first time I took Sebastian fishing, we went on the freelance on a twilight trip and we caught bass and it was this little kid about three years old, okay? Barely making over the rail, but he was catching your, his first bass. And what was your favorite time with us together? My favorite time was when I was just about 16 and we went out together and we was wide open b b barracuda fishing and we caught a couple sea bass. A couple white sea bass, yeah. And I really enjoyed the time that I spent with my dad. It was quality Papa. time, wasn't it? It was great quality time. All right, so folks, pass on the passion. This is what it's all about. Spending quality time with your kid on the water. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Ooh, rattlesnake. Yeah, big rattlesnake. That's it, son. Look, Uncle Serge. Yeah. That's what they look like right there. Oh, this one's poisonous, I think. Uncle Serge, give me a high five. Yeah! What? Skull five. Very good. Good job, Isaiah. Good job. Good job. Good job. Mm. I told you you were good. It was your turn. Sometimes a father and son can get involved with a lengthy but worthwhile project, such as the case with Eric Bent and his dad, Jerry. Together, they completely refurbished this old Boston whaler, which had been wrecked, indeed passing on the passion. Well, the first time I took Eric fishing, we were living up in the Bay Area, and we were going striper fishing. And uh, we left quite early, got out on, out on the bay, and he was still sleeping. And he slept most of the day, except when he was time to eat, and he would wake up and eat his lunch and my lunch. <laughs> but, but he managed to catch a couple of fish that, that day, and we all had a great time. And I, he was only three years old. 
My favorite memory of fishing with my dad would have to be the year I graduated high school. We trailered our center console all the way to Cabo San Lucas. We had the plans of stopping at La Paz, but when we got to La Paz, it was windy. And they said, it's gonna stay windy. So we went all the way to Cabo. My dad and my uncle and I, in the front seat of a regular cab truck, and we ended up staying there in 10 days, for, for 10 days in a timeshare, because every hotel was booked. So we lived it up for 10 days in Cabo and caught marlin, dorado, tuna, all kinds of cabrilla and other things we didn't even know what they were. It was just a great, great trip, great memory. So I want to thank you, Dad, for, for everything. This is awesome. You're the best. Dad, I got it! You got it? Folks, welcome back to Angler Chronicles and this week's episode, Passing on the Passion. Right now, Scott Pethtel is fishing inside Long Beach Harbor with his children, Reed and Isabella. Stay with us. There were reports of thresher sharks in this area of Long Beach Harbor and Scott just may have had one hooked up, but we will never know since the line parted. Right now we're going to join back up with Sergio, Mike Lane and his boys Isaiah and Jackson. For many of us the passion for fishing is something passed on from a parent, a sibling or a very good friend. Scott and Mike are passing on the passion for sport fishing to their kids. Fishermen at Angler Chronicles, we would love to hear from you. Please join us on Facebook and tell us your personal experience about passing on the passion. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to chase them, okay? Uh, All right, we're going to slow down a little bit, third. Oh, <laughs> I got something big. What were you trolling? Uh, I was trolling a big, uh, I don't know, a big Rapala. Okay, the first time that we took Aaron fishing was over at Lake Irvine, and we caught some trout. Thing. Then 15, 20 minutes later, look around, and Aaron's gone. He's over there sleeping in the van. Then I'd wake up about 15 minutes later, come out and go fishing again. And we, you know, it was just a great time for all of us to bond and, and grow as a family. And you know, eventually I want to pass on that to my grandson Ezra. Can't wait to teach him the passion of fishing. Angler Chronicles and Passing on the Passion will be right back. I like at least let's have them come pop up so we can just see them, you know? Yeah, you bet. Well, this is what I did fish for when I was a kid, it was bad race. Oh. Sam Jackson? Yeah, how big is it? It's pretty big, bud. Oh, it's right there. Folks, if you're just now joining us, you're watching Passing on the Passion on Angler Chronicles. Sergio is fishing today with Mike Lane and Scott Pethtel as Mike and Scott are passing on their passion for sport fishing to their children. There's a lot more bent rod action as well as Passing on the Passion still ahead on Angler Chronicles. There you go, work. Oh yeah, Jackson. Yeah. Short pumping that puppy, look at that. There you go, don't let him take you, bud. Get him up, there you go. You got him, bud. You got him. 
got him. Nice calico. It is a nice calico. Look at here. Right on. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Right on. Did we get to keep that one? Good. No, we're going to release it. Hey, nice buddy. job. Look on your shirt. Nice. Oh, this is so big. <laughs> Fisherman at Angler Chronicles, we would love to hear from you. Please join us on Facebook and tell us your personal experience about passing on the passion. So I used to fish all day while my dad was at work. Frank the Bum was my babysitter when I was a kid. And so when my dad uh, would get back and see if I still wanted to fish, and I'd fish all day, all night on Seal Beach Pier. So I got to know everybody and um, started bat ray fishing. I used to love bat ray fishing. And then, um, they had the Annie B barge out here, Isaiah, and they had this big barge that used to be out here anchored, right? And on, on, it would be a, like a building in the middle. There'd be two openings in the middle on each side. You catch mackerel. I'd come out here. I'd set up my rods because I'd get out here before everybody else, and I'd stay the whole weekend out on the barge. And so I'd catch mackerel, tom cod, uh, and, and we set up for bat rays and gray sharks and. Folks, this is the producer and narrator for Angler Chronicles Television, Danny Jackson. I have had the passion for sport fishing for more than 60 years, and I learned it all from my dad. When we come back from our break, it will be my pleasure to share with you vintage video clips of my children and grandchildren as Passing on the Passion continues. Angler Chronicles, proud to be sponsored by Owner Perfection in Hooks, Bass Knuckles Clothing, and by Turner's Outdoorsman, your fishing, hunting, and shooting headquarters since 1971. Well, Corby, I wanted to just talk about, first of all, my dad and your grandpa Rex. Uh, back in the 50s, my dad uh, took me fishing, first of all, at Davy's Locker. And that's where my dad uh, started me fishing. I want to show you a little, uh, a few video clips here right now of uh, my dad, again, Corby's Grandpa Rex, fishing aboard the Searcher. But that was my dad. He loved to fish and he certainly passed the passion on to me. I started Corby fishing at Davy's Locker on the old sport fisher. He was a deckhand actually, what they called a pinhead in those days. I started working for Don Brockman when I was 11 years old in the sport fisher. Just weekends and every day in the summertime. And uh, uh, next thing you know, I was a regular deck in, and, and uh, I started running the boat when I was 19, started running the freelance. Corby uh, caught his first Wahoo when he was uh, 13 years old. This was aboard the Searcher out of San Diego. Show you some video clips of that right now. That was a big thrill for Corby and, of course, for his dad. Right now, I'm going to show you some clips from uh, the Searcher. This is Kerry. Uh, it was Kerry Jackson in those days, Kerry Lester nowadays. Also, Rachel, Carrie's little sister, she's an avid uh, fisherman. And here's some clips of Rachel fishing aboard the Caliber, Jack Lester's boat, a few years ago. And Corby and I have made several trips to Panama in the last few years. Uh, Panama was great. The weather was great. The, uh, the fish all have teeth. When he says they all have teeth, he's talking about the Kubera snapper, the dog tooth snapper. And, we caught a lot of those. Also, my grandson, Corby's son, Danny, little Danny Jackson, tell, tell us about how you're passing on the passion to Danny. Uh, I used to bring Danny out on the boat with me when I was uh, running the squid a lot, the light boat. And uh, he was three years old, and he would come out and scoop squid with me. And uh, we had a lot of fun back then. I want to thank you for passing on the passion that you have in fishing. Thanks. The passion for sport fishing is alive and well in the Jackson family. And right now we are going back to Long Beach Harbor and join Scott Pethtel and his son Reed and daughter Isabella as Passing on the Passion continues. Okay, right there. Look at that one. Ooh. What kind is that one? Say calico bass. Calico bass. <laughs> All right, you ready? I'm going to throw them back, okay? Bye-bye. Yep, got one. Oh, Calico! Okay, come here. Ready? Ready, Val? Bye-bye. 
You know what kind of bass that is? Ready? There he goes. Daddy, oh, Look at that one. That's a giant. That's a calico bass? That's a calico bass. Look how big it is. What is that? Maybe a calico bass? Well, folks, today we had a fantastic day on the water with what really matters in this life, which is passing on the passion. We love to fish. You got to pass it on to the little guys. For their next birthday, instead of an Xbox, buy them a tackle box. Thanks, Thanks Uncle Serge. Thank you, Daddy. Daddy. Love you guys. Oh, you're the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a phenomenal day with the kids. Uh, it was awesome to get out there and uh, show the kids uh, what we do and what we're so passionate about and pass that down and hopefully uh, in the future they'll be able to pass it down to their kids and so on and so on and uh, you know with how much we love this sport and have such a passion for the sport uh, it's so great to get kids involved uh, for the future not only for the future for themselves uh, in life but also for the future of the sport you know if it wasn't for my grandfather my great-grandfather my father uh, taking me fishing when I was you know, Bell's age, you know, three years old, four years old. Um, I don't think I would be here today, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. I love you so much. I love you. Mm -hmm.